am i audible good morning and welcome everyone to the very first session of this week long uh, week long national workshop i'm vikram bora i teach history at bahana college and today i've been entrusted with the responsibility of that of the moderator for this session before we begin i'd like to welcome dr hantona faikia esteem principal of our college i extend a welcome to dr pujya sutia principal in sutia college and president of sutia atiya bhavana parishad who are also our academic partners for this event the faculty of bahana college and our esteemed participants and guests and of course please allow me to reserve a very special welcome to dr sabina yasmin faikia our keynote speaker for the very first session bahana college has been a premier academic institution of jorhat since its very inception the college has a vibrant academic environment with an increasing emphasis on rigorous intensive eclectic and high yielding research and because of this emphasis we bring you this week long national seminar on research methodology in ethnographic study ethnographic practices as we all know plays a very crucial role in research particularly in the social sciences but not necessarily limited to it by immersing researchers in the natural settings of their subjects ethnography enables an in-depth understanding of what we are dealing with to gather rich representative and contextually relevant data on your ethnographic video practices to... capture the complexity layers and nuances of human behavior beliefs and interactions so this allows researchers to explore Uh, subjective experiences of individuals and communities shedding light on social structures and cultural norms uh, and with these goals uh, these goals are not necessarily limited to social sciences and as teachers and researchers the trajectory of our academic investment is often intertwined with the larger community of our surroundings and because of this imbibing the practices of ethnography in our works can be a choice that is both prudent and ethical regardless of the disciplinary boundaries that we often find ourselves grappling with so on this very particular note i hope this workshop will be able to ask some new questions and open up new vistas of exploring ethnography in our works in the works of our friends and colleagues and also in our communities so but before we proceed to our first session we have a few agenda on hand at the very first i would like to request dr hantona khaikya ma'am the principal of our college to offer her welcome address to our guests over to you ma'am good morning i'm very happy to welcome you to this week long national workshop on research methodology in ethnographic study organized by our college in collaboration with sutia jatiyo gobekhona porikhod dr Shab uh, shabina shabina yasmin hoykia ma'am from associate professor from the department of sociology gohati university dr hujjo sutia principal tinsukia college and who is also the president of our collaborating organization sekyo ma'am who will be delivering our keynote address participants from states across india it is indeed a pleasure to have you with us i would have loved to meet you all on a physical platform because more so because this is a workshop on field based study however different constraints effective time management uh these are some of the issues which compel us nowadays to stick to the virtual medium and which will also you will the participants will find will become a tool in your research also so here we are Bahana College is an old institution. We have completed 57 years, and we have also completed the third cycle of our NAT accreditation, and we have been graded with an A plus. And our trajectory has been has not really been smooth, if I may say so. We began. We are located some uh, about nine kilometers from the heart of the city, Jorhat, and we began with a handful of students. and now we accommodate students not only from assam but from our neighboring states also this college 
you know, is unique in the sense that this is a community-oriented college. This was set up not just by a few people. It was an exercise of the entire community. A lot of villages coming together, rendering their physical labor, goodwill, helping hand, donations. Our donation register even shows the donation of a rupee one, one rupee. And that is why, you know, many of our, you know, neighboring areas, the people, they would still refer to this college as our college. It's a privilege and also a huge responsibility that we understand. So along with our academic support to our students, to which we are 100% committed, we also undertake a lot of community-based activities. We have seven adopted villages where our cells and departments are continuously engaged in um, skill-based expertise programs, employability, self-employment, women empowerment, and such. And it also has its reciprocal value because it opens up you know, avenues for research for our social sciences and even in the science, natural science departments. So, and research is a strong point in our college. We regularly organize workshops and seminars, but this is the first time that we are organizing a workshop on ethnographic research and I'm very excited about it. And I have to thank my young and active IQSC team led by a very dy dynamic coordinator, Dr. Pankaj Bora. Thank you, Pankaj and Vikram and the entire team, Anupam. You know, moving out of the domain of anthropology, field-based study, ethnography has permeated through different disciplines now. It opens up such rich avenues, contexts for study, which will be taken up in this workshop, I'm sure. And we are hosting a number of eminent scholars who will be your resource persons. I'm addressing the participants now. And I hope and I'm sure that you will have many takeaways from this seminar, a workshop, I'm sorry. So I would like to close by welcoming you all once again. And my particular thanks goes out to Shabina Yasmin Saikya, ma'am, for giving us your valuable time. I'm looking forward to a very promising week ahead. And I hope the participants and the resource persons will engage in way forward, in finding way forwards to some very meaningful research. Thank you and welcome again to Bahuna College. I hope to meet you all physically someday. Thank you once again. Thank Would you, you ma'am. Uh, next, we have Dr. Hongita Da. Assistant Professor, Department of Botany, Bahana College. She's a convener of this workshop, and I'd like to request her to introduce her participants to Bahana College and to the life and career of this college. Thank you, Bikram. Respected Principal, Bahana College, Dr. Shantana Shokya, ma'am. Respected Dr. Shuja Shutia, sir, Principal, Tinshukya College and the president of Shutia Jatiyo Gobihana Parikhat. Respected our today's honorable keynote speaker, Dr. Shabina Yashmin Saikya, ma'am, from Department of Sociology, Guwahati University, IQC coordinator, and the convener of today's workshop, Dr. Pankas Bora, all other respected learned academicians, research scholars, and all esteemed participants across the country. A warm welcome and a very good morning to all of you who are present here today with us in this one week long workshop on resource methodologies for ethnographic study. Actually, after principal ma'am, I have very few left to enumerate about our college, Bahana College, but still. Established in the year 1966, Bahana College has a glorious history of more than 50 years. The college is located at the southern bank of mighty Brahmaputra, and it is just nine kilometers away from the main Johar city of Upper Assam. It is a degree college with 12 departments, 50 faculties, and it is affiliated to Dibugo University of Assam. Bahana College is the first college in the Jorhat district of Upper Assam to receive the prestigious NAC A plus grade with a CGPA of 3.36 in the year 2022. Since then, the college has always strived for academic excellence. 
And this overall learning experience at Bahana College is greatly influenced by the clean and green, beautiful environment, college campus, for which the college was honored with excellent environment and climate change award in the year 2022 by government of Assam. The college is also engaged with different research activities. The Institutional Biotech Hub of Bahana College has received a grant from Department of Biotechnology, Gulf of India in the year 2023. The faculties of Bahana College are regularly engaged with different activities like research as well as extension. And this workshop is the result of such an initiative by the faculty members of our college, especially our coordinator, IPC coordinator, Dr. Pankos Gora. Uh, there, are, there are much more to speak about Bahana College, but the time in this workshop is really very precious. So with these few words, I, have, I hope I have properly introduced Bahana College with all of you, especially to those who are from outside Assam. So that's all. Thank you so much. Over to you, Vikram. Thank you, ma'am. We have with us Dr. Pucha Sutia, the principal of Tins, uh, the principal of Tinsukia College, and the president of Sutia Zatiya Gobekhana Parikhod. The Parikhod is our academic partner for this event, and without them, this workshop might not might not have seen the light of day. So I'd like to request him to briefly introduce our participants to the Gobekhana Parikhod and the forms of endeavors they're currently engaged with, sir. Thank you. Honorable resource person of this inaugural function, Honorable principal ma'am of Bahana College, coordinators, IQSC, and uh, participants. First of all, I congratulate and welcome you all to this one long, one week national level workshop on the research methodology for anthropographic study, which is being organized by IQSC Bahana College Zurhat in collaboration with the Sutia Zatiya Gobekhana Parikhot Assam. Being the president of the Gobekhana Parikhot, I want to say a few words regarding the Parikhot. Uh, the Sutia Zatiya Gobekhana Parikhot is established in the year 2021. It is a very new one. The main objective of the Parikhot is to encourage and assist the research and development works related to various aspects of life, society, history, and ethnic groups of Assam. It will be a platform to reflect cultural heritage and pluralistic nature of Assamese society in order to develop a sense of commonness and promote unity and harmony among all the communities of Assam. Mm -hmm. This collaboration for the workshop is a part in this line. I think the honorable resource persons and participants will discuss and interact on various aspects of on research methodology, especially for an anthropographic study, which will create a sense of awareness and enrich our participant at least to some extent. I hope the program will be a grand success. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now I'd like to request Dr. Pankaj Bora to familiarize our participants with the workshop and its uh, nitty gritty. Dr. Bora is the coordinator of IQSC Bahana College and also a convener of this workshop, sir. Uh, thank you, Bikram. Respected Principal Bahana College, respected uh, Principal Tinsukia College and the President of Sutia Zatiya Gobekhana Purikhod. Our honorable keynote speaker, Yasmin Saikia, ma'am, uh, dear participants and the uh, faculty members of Bahana College. I am very happy to introduce myself and the college before you while organizing this week long workshop on ethnographic research. Bahana College has been organizing research workshops for the last three years. And uh, this time we are, uh, we have taken a specific topic that we will. Uh, organized research workshop spe uh, specifically on ethnographic study and uh, around 75 plus participants joined this workshop. They are from different parts of uh, India and we have invited 12 resource persons for 14 sessions. 
and i hope we all will learn a lot in the coming six seven days about ethnographic study i believe that uh, after attending this seven days workshop we all will learn a lot about research we all will learn a lot about ethnographic research and after that we will be in a position to do good uh, quality research in ethnography india especially northeast india is a hub of uh, hub for ethnographic research and there are ample opportunities for all of us to do research in ethnography and after this workshop we believe there will be uh, good publications there will be good research uh, and we all will uh, be able to deliver uh, academic work research work based on uh, ethnographic study uh, about if, if i tell about the uh, sessions we have we have planned uh, 12 live sessions starting this uh, inaugural session then we have one session uh, today after this uh, session that is it will start from 1 30 and professor samir kumar das sir will address and he will say about methodology for ethnographic research tomorrow we have invited uh, dr alok kumar pandey from university of hyderabad and he will speak on data collection techniques in ethnography the second session will be on ethical issues in ethnography and Dr. Ketukri from Nagaland will deliver speech on that session. On 8th of June, we have two sessions. The first session will be by Professor Anil Kumar Boro from uh, Department of Folklore, Guadalupe University. And the second session will be by Dr. Santana Sekia, our principal. And on 9th, uh, we have invited Dr. Bharati Bharali and Dr. Sargojati Guhai for two different sessions. On 10th, we have invited Dr. Meghna Choudhury to speak on special topics in ethnography. And we have invited Dr. Dipgajati Bhattacharji from Assam University to speak on approaches to data analysis and ethnography. It will be a hands-on session. Uh, on Sunday, that is on 11th, we will have peer discussions. Well, we will moderate the session and we expect everyone to take part in the uh, peer discussion. Uh, the last day of the workshop is on 12th of June, and we have invited Dr. Mukut Sarma, Associate Professor from Department of Library, Assam University, to speak on digital ethnography, researching in online and virtual environment. And we will conclude this workshop with validatory session, and where we have invited Dr. Professor Akhil Randan Dotto as guest of honor. And with these 12 live sessions and two uh, peer discussion sessions, we will conclude the workshop. We have also arranged uh, six assignment sessions. These assignment sessions are arranged so that we can uh, cover the entire workshop within 40 to 42 hours so that we can follow the guidelines prescribed by the UGC. And so that this certificate that you have obtained after attending this workshop become valid for your API. I believe that uh, in coming few sessions, we, we you all will cooperate and we will all have a very meaningful workshop. And I also expect you to uh, uh, collaborate, help us in, in our future endeavors also. With this, I conclude my uh, statement. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now we come to our keynote speaker. We are privileged to have with us an academician of serious caliber, an erudite scholar of the discipline of sociology and anthropology, Dr. Sabina Yasmin Kalikia. Dr. Hoikya did her MA in Sociology from Pondicherry University and MSc in Anthropology from University of Delhi. She received her doctorate from Guwahati University with a very fascinating work on the changing social systems of the Karbi community of Guwahati. Her academic interests encompass ethnicity and social change, especially in the autonomous council areas of Assam, with a particular focus on the Karbis. She has also been associated with institutions such as OKD Institute of Social Change and Development, University of Amsterdam, and Australian National University. On a personal note, what I found very fascinating is her study on the Australian Aborigines, which is on my bucket list to read. So currently, she is an associate professor with the Department of Sociology, Guwahati University. Today, Dr. Hoikya will share with us some of her vast experience on theories and methods of ethnography. And I hope for all our participants and guests, this will be a really an enriching and productive session. Before the session, I request to all the participants, please keep your microphones muted while the speaker is delivering their address. If you have any questions, comments, queries, you may write them in the text channel of your Google Meet interface, or you may direct them to the speaker after the address is done. 
So without further ado, over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much uh, for your kind and warm welcome. I thank the organizers, the coordinator of this uh, of this program, of this workshop. I also thank the principal of Bahana College, the principal of Tinsukia College, and for their wonderful gesture. And it's of course a very, uh, you know, an honor for, for me to be given this opportunity to deliver the keynote address on a topic which is so very intriguing. And I, I personally find it very intriguing. And, uh, and, and I'm, I, I'd also like to congratulate the team for choosing this topic, a very pertinent topic of, uh, of social research or research in, in culture. And uh, what comes to my mind is that whenever we talk of ethnography, as a, as a student of social science, as, as someone who has been trying to mentor uh, others in uh, research, in quality research in social science, now it has always been, uh, you know, uh, very uh, not so very easy or simple to understand what is ethnography, what is not ethnography. But of course, if we go by its very uh, etymological term, we know ethno. Ethnos means culture, culture of people. And graphy is actually about writing. So it's about writing culture. In that sense, it's about writing culture. But to write about culture, we have to study the culture. And to study culture, we should have certain theoretical understandings of what culture is, of what society is, and of course, the methods of of of, uh, of research. So when we talk of uh, ethnography, uh, we need to know what would actually qualify, what kind of research would actually qualify to be deemed as ethnography and what will actually not be uh, within the very, uh, within the net the umbrella of ethnography. Again, there, there are, uh, you know, uh, debates regarding what ethnography is, what ethnography is not, or there, and these debates are ongoing as happens in any kind of discipline. So before going into that particular domain, I would like to start with what conventional ethnography is, because unless we start from that point, uh, will not be, we will still be, we'll have to move into very murky waters of, of understanding what ethnography is. So uh, to make more sense, uh, more sense, because there are there are uh, co commentators, there are practitioners of ethnography or sociologists, anthropologists, or or researchers who would not deem it fit to try to categorically, you know, uh, encapsulate what is ethnography. But unless we do that, it becomes pedagogically and heuristically very difficult to have at least a some understanding, a common understanding, a simplified understanding of where to start from. So to get that kind of a feel of, of a starting point of what uh, ethnography is, I would like also to start with how ethnography as a systematic uh, means of uh, studying society in a qualitative sense begins with. And we all know it starts with uh, uh, in the early part of 20th century, systematic the early part of 20th century, in the domains of anthropology and also sociology. When we talk of anthropology, it starts in the in Europe. In Europe, more particularly among in among the British school of anthropology, and amongst the sociologists, it starts it starts with in America in USA with uh, the Chicago School of, of of sociology, particularly urban sociology. And they have two different ways of, you know, there are two uh, trajectories of of, of development of, of ethnography. So let us start with the conventional understanding of ethnography as we know. And to do that, we look back to Redcliffe Brown, Bronislaw uh, Redcliffe Brown, and of course, Malinowski. Malinowski in the early part of the 20th century. Now, Malinowski and uh, Redcliffe Brown, they belong to that particular period when or to the positivist paradigm. 
So we know what positivism is about. Positivism looks at beliefs that reality is external. And it could be studied. It could be comprehended very objectively, empirically, by using certain set procedures. And, and this also could be, it could be verified. It could be, it, and the information is reliable. So, and we know Imail Durkheim was a positivist. And being a positivist, he was of, also a functionalist. But Imam Durkheim was not an ethnographer. He was not an ethnographer, as we we can we can see he's not an ethnographer. But then, but then, Redcliff Brown, who was who was a positivist, Melnowski was a positivist, were ethnographers, and they used qualitative research. Durkheim particularly used uh, st uh, statistical tools to understand or to drive home his points, to drive home his theory of functionalism. Now, Redcliffe Brown and Malinowski, I'll, 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 I'll more, mostly I'll touch upon Malinowski for the moment, because Malinowski is considered to the father of ethnography, in the sense that he is actually who, the one who had uh, developed participant observation as a core of ethnography. Now, they had taken, they understood that ethnography is, of course, it is empirical. It is empirical in the sense that we have to conduct first-hand study that we that is known to us first-hand study we have to study the people the culture amongst the setting in the setting within the setting amongst the people where it occurs and the setting has to be the everyday life that we want to study the field that's why field work and then he says the most the most core point is that we have to understand the social life the culture of the people from their own perspective, from their own point of view. And at the time, it was said to be the native's point of view because the way anthropology at the time was more concerned with understanding the others, the study of other cultures. So that is the exotic cultures, the natives, and they were the Europeans. So of course, they belong to the evolutionist paradigm and they considered themselves to be most, more, you know, uh, more modern, and, and the other cultures are quite, which needs to be studied. They are natives. And that also dynamics changes gradually. So the point of view uh, of the people had to be studied. And how do we study this point of view? There are, again, not many modalities, not many methods, how to study this point of view. And later, later uh, development occurs in this line of how to study the natives or the core peoples, the participants' point of view. But then again, an additional point to, uh, to this is that we have to, in order to understand the meaning, we cannot understand the meaning if taken in isolation from the context. It has to occur within the context. So cultural relativism comes here, the concept of cultural relativism, the wider context. So in a particular study, you know, for example, um, in a study, uh, there are a lot of studies, uh, particularly ethnographic studies, which try to understand the, the menstruation of the experience of menstruating women. And most of the work, ethnographic work, we find that the study is about how women are actually marginalized how how they have been there's an othering of, of women or, or or curtailing of the agency of women so that that has been a dominant it seemed to be the most you know proliferant the most dominant um, way of looking at menstruation of women now there's a particular study which was conducted don't know who uh, i forgot the name who conducted but the particular study the, the the takeaway point here is that in a particular study the researcher has pointed that we, in order to understand why among the Hindus, among the Brahmin Hindus in India, why menstru menstruation is considered as polluting. But on the other hand, for men, there we have very less instances of things which are polluting. So that she wanted to understand the meaning of pollute, polluting, meaning of pollution within that culture, instead of seeing menstruation as pollution as, as pollution or polluting in its in, in in a very isolated way she tried to understand the meaning of pollution or what pollutes in the culture as a whole and she found out by looking at the very text and the ideals of the people is that there are many things which are considered polluting in its society 
and one of the pollution is the, are the people of the the outcast the outcast are very are polluting for the higher caste and bodily secretions are polluting certain bodily secretions are polluting menstrual blood is polluting although it is very regenerative it is also very it it, it is also worship at the same time in the in, in the in the mythologies in the scriptures but it is at the one hand it is polluting in the same, same way other secretions from uh, other male secretions are also polluting but not the semen and there are certain things she tried to find out and in this context see she she equates that that how the how how why woman is considered to be polluting but the the problem here is that not not with the research the problem here is that the pollution for this notion of pollution for menstruating women becomes very critical for her because she menstruates every month for men such bodily secretion is, is not curtailing because it doesn't happen so very frequently and it is it, it is not so very visible as as it is for women so that is how the whole the, the, and that is how ethnography would look at understanding the whole the, the meanings of the people within a context and Malinowski had insisted at point of time the context is the entire community being studied that is holism the holistic so of course Malinowski was concerned with smaller communities so definitely it was possible to study the entire community holistically so it was studied but it that doesn't always mean that ethnography is a study of of the entire communities as such ethnography we have seen when you move on to 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 that of the urban urban uh, sociology as conducted in the, in the chicago school they have studied smaller such uh, such communities in the city for example they have conducted studies among the slums among the among the, among the, the peasants ड्रग यूजर्स we take into account the experiences of the of the drug users holistically we connect it with other dimensions of the of the life which are pertinent to understanding the use of drugs for instance and there are other singular such studies like the experiences of 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 you know of fathers who are full time caretakers and how ethnographers would study how to access the field as in order to understand this understand the meanings so there are again a lot many entire repertoire of ideas of epistemology epistemologies of methods of how the researcher will gain access to a field to understand the symbolic world view the meanings of the people coming from a very different background most perhaps or most possibly from a different background coming with their own subjectivities how will they will they objectively be successful in understanding the the world view the symbolic world view of another people another uh, another culture so these were issues which 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 have always cropped up in in a critical understanding of ethnography and there and there we find that ethnography while dealing with these kind of of this kind of uh, of, of of issues of these problems have actually evolved and it has it has moved to 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 to, to different dimensions of of inquiry it's so much so that ethnography no longer remains curtail to a very limited limited spectrum the the, the ethnography the boundaries of ethnography the the contours of ethnography has expanded to a, to a tremendously so much so that it becomes very difficult to give a, give it understanding a comprehensive understanding and assessment of ethnography but still i am trying to bring in to 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 bring as simply as possible some of the some of the you know uh, impo important points of ethnography which will enable us to appreciate and understand what we are dealing with what we are concerned with 
it doesn't it does not uh, it, it's not a claim that it is sufficient to understand ethnography but it's just a starting point and melnoski therefore says that in of, in order to understand and of course later ethnographers agree that in order to understand the symbolic worldview of 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 people of cultures of participants who are not us who are not me of others we need to immerse ourselves in that particular cultural life so immersion is very important and again there are debates there are contestations of how can a researcher immerse herself or himself or themselves in the in the field of study so there these are the these are the points which we need to take care of then even some there are, there are, we have we, you know when when you are uh, most of us when uh, most of you must have been work, must be working or trying to use ethnographic study or use ethnography as a method in your research work and when perhaps you are trying to uh, uh, you know del uh, uh, discuss your synopsis or proposal in a public in an academic platform or domain you know you you, you will come up with different kinds of ideas coming in from the people and there were some who would, and I, I, I do have come across these kind of positions. There are some people who would say that ethnography is out and out and only exclusively a qualitative method. And since the qualitative method, we can use only the, the tools of qualitative research, like focus group interview, like, um, like, like case studies or any kind of interview, narrative, case histories, life histories, basically due to, to an observation, basically deal with uh, uh contact by understanding through contact of course uh very very in a qualitative sense to understand that this this other uh, other subjectivity but we find that it is not limited to that ethnography is a bundle of methods there's a multiplicity of methods there's no limitation of methods and the methods which we use is under the discretion of the researcher the objective of a researcher is to understand the meanings of the people as completely as, again, that's a reservation, as far as possible, as far validly as possible, as scientifically as possible. So scientifically, I mean, I don't mean to say that, uh, you know, again, science, notion of science, what is science, have also undergone changes with a, with, 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 with a changing uh, understanding of, uh, of reality of different epistemologies and contestations on ontology. So when we talk of multiplicity of methods, even quantitative methods can figure in ethnographic research. Quantitative method, I mean survey method, statistical methods, and Malinowski, who was a who was a who who who, who had adopted participant observation in his research, he himself used statistical methods, statistical tools to, to understand, to actually Give a, to understand, uh, give a synoptic understanding of his, of, the, of his field. And in fact, I've seen in your list that you have got a statistical, someone as, from statistics department will be delivering about data. So right now we have, and, and, I, and, and I'm talking about a time, the early part of 20th century, when ethnography has emerged, even at a point of time when when statistical uh, we, 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 at a different time statistical tools were uh, they were urged to use statistical tools census all this kind of uh, survey method to understand the the, the the field so it is not at all limited in that sense now now uh, again uh, when we talk about um, about access here i'd like to note that when talking about having it the researcher having access to the field now, how is a researcher to gain access to someone else's way of life, their meanings? So most often we have that uh, we know that the method of participant observation needs to be used. But if unless and until you are a participant in that culture, you'll not be able to understand their way of life. So what does participant observation imply? Then some would say participant observation would imply that a, a researcher is accepted as a, as, a, as a part of the group that a researcher wants to study. So much so that the presence of the researcher will not interfere with the mundane, the day-to-day -day occurrences and practices of the participants of the group. 
So the person, the researcher, the, 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 the participants no longer become very conscious about the presence of the researcher and the, they will go about with a with a mundane, the normal, the normal, I mean normal the sense that what they would have done even in the absence of the researcher. So at that the moment that that phase is achieved, it will it will be very difficult to gain access to the field. And once that happens, the researcher automatically becomes a participant observer and can gain and gain an inroad into the world of the the, the, the worldview of the of their of the, those they are researching. Then again, this brings us to the to the, to the question of objectivity. Is objectivity possible? How can a researcher remain objective if they're actually trying to participate in the cultural life of the people, the symbolic life of the people, their meanings, and then remain objective? That is what is said that as a trained ethnographer, as an observer, because we have we must not forget that we are participant, but we are also an observer. Observer who has to have the objective as far as possible. So when we talk of autoethnography, it means people who belong only are participants of their own group. If I want to study, for example, I am a faculty in a particular de department. If I want to study the, the experiences of teachers in this university, I'll be conducting autoethnography. But, the, but, but that position should not blur my objectivity. I should remain an astute observer at the same time. So this is a point, this is something that we need not, did not uh, ignore. Ignore, okay? Now, when we are talking about these, uh, uh, these kind of uh, uh, positions of uh, how to gain access into field and how to remain objective, now, in gradually, in due course of time, these notions, the positivistic claim and legitimation of being objective were put to test. Were put to test so much, and it begins with, with I, as far as I can, we can see in sociology, Weberian, uh, Weber, uh, Weber's interpretative methodology and a, a broad uh, paradigm of interpretism, interpretivism do question the, the, the possibility of becoming objective. And we move on to the post-positivist domain of, of of epistemology and with this with this we arrive at a at a point in the trajectory of ethnography where these notions of conventional ethnography are now questioned certain dimensions are being questioned the 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 claim that one could be would could be objective is now put to put to interrogation is un, is now critiqued now it says that the moment with claim that we can be objective it actually echoes the idea that that a researcher is a subject and those they are researching are actually objects to be studied so with the dismantling gradually these kind of understandings of the social world has been dismantled and we arrive at a point where we treat or we think that the that that the researcher, just as much the researcher is a subject who has meanings, the, those who are being researched are also subjects. They are also producers of meanings, they are creators of meanings. The researcher also comes from a cultural background. If a researcher is a researcher in education, in, in, in humanities, in social sciences, or comes from the field of psychiatry, then they have their own baggage of ideas, of theories and methods. And if it's a male, if it's a man, they have he will have his own experiences belonging to his subjective positions. So we are not we are not empty vessels. We have our own subjectivities. So the now the idea, the focus, the critical inquiry is that we are we when a researcher moves into field, it is actually an interaction between subjectivities, between inter that is intersubjective intersubjective uh, 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 exchanges intersubjective is actually subjective exchanges this is about intersubjectivity and meaning is actually if i try to understand what a menstruating woman would uh, or, or experiences my understanding will be different from 
from another researcher who happens to be a man and a man trying to study a male trying to study the menstruation as experience of woman will have a different kind of an understanding than what i will have perhaps i will have or 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 or, 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 or a young girl who is of 18 years will have a different take of me than a person in my late 40s will have about it so now we arise at the position the positions of the researcher now becomes very crucial and this is what we have to be concerned about we have to self we have to we have to we have to critic our own own positionality we have to be conscious about our own positionality what we are carrying to the field now there is this idea that that when i go to field it's not that there is a particular way of life which is constant which is given i go there i watch i understand i interpret i come back it is not like that the field is not like that it is field is an ever emerging area domain of meanings and practices and the moment i go in the field as with my own meanings i actually create new meanings we as we in this process of data collection we actually also also creating data the data because the moment the, a particular girl will tell me her experience as a as a menstruating girl as starting at at, at, at menarche or at menopause will be different because if i come from a from a city my understanding will be, will be will have will bear that kind of kind of nuances so the meaning will be constructed at that moment and my my participants who will also be also who am i researching will also be appreciate will also be evaluating me will be assessing me we will be trying to understand my subjectivity it's an ongoing process of of understanding and each other's meaning and in the process newer meanings are constructed so now we come to a position where in the in in the in the history of of of, of development of of cultural science or social science and as a corollary of methods in social science research and particular ethnography we come to a point where we we acknowledge that the field which we study is uh, is not given but it is an emerging emerging domain and in this emergence i as a researcher have a role a role which is not uh, which is which is not neutral actually in the sense neutral in the sense that i am a part of this meaning construction and and i will leave a mark i will leave a mark on the on the mental scape on the on the on this uh, on, 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 the, on the symbolic domain of my of my of those who i want to study it will remain the effects will remain it will remain in their subjectivity so that is what is said that when we are doing ethnography and we really claim to understand going to feel and understand the meanings of other people their perspective that we have to also be careful that that this is not so very not so very uh, objective it is highly subjective and therefore we need to be aware of our own subjectivities when conducting research when using tools and what to do now now we know that uh, it is not so very uh, objective now what do we do with the with the with text that we create the writing cultures writing that we write about them what to do about this writing is it valid is it invalid what about is it legitimate now this is what happens now there is a crisis but this crisis does not delegitimize ethnography or any kind of method which try to study the cultural life of the people because we can circumvent this limitation by making it a stronger point as a strength the strength is that we leave we write when we write about these this uh, about interpret this data this data primary data and we write about it we have to clearly write about our positionality who are we what do i do what i encounter in the field the limitations i have so when i write my methodology the method should not be like simply supportive research it is ethnography i'm using interview uh, done and done so and so and blah 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 finished no i have actually i need to now write and like a kind of an essay the, the what what issues i i i i confronted 
how I, I navigated through it, what kind of informants I actually interviewed, why I interviewed them, what kind of data I, I collected. And my positionality, their positionality has to be written down very dis, in, in very clearly so that my readers can understand. And I leave it upon my readers to make sense of it. I do not claim, I no longer claim that this is it. This is everything that needs to be studied. I am, I, I now acknowledge, I become self-critical of my position. I become self-critical of what I have written. So I leave it upon my readers to make sense of it using their own positionality. Again, we must be clear at the same time that we have, we, it doesn't mean that we become unscientific. We are scientific because we are now acknowledging the issues which are part and parcel of this process of doing ethnographic research. I become sensitive and I try to address these issues to the best of my capability. And that is now scientific exercise. I leave it for my readers to, to comprehend it, to interpret that, that text. So we arrive at this position, which is now known as reflexive, the reflexive turn in ethnography, the reflexive turn in the, uh, in, in the domain of social sciences, which also percolates down to methods that we, we used. And so much so, so far, the, the, the nature of methods that are used now have also, have also undergone, have become enriching, have become, have enriched. Because now also we find this kind of uh, research methods, you know, which are accounts which have become very personalized. Nowadays, we find people writing about their ethnographies. They're, they're, they're writing about it using the first, the you know, the first person, I, I. And there was a point of time when we were urged, when you're writing about ethnographies, we have to say the researcher, researcher, the third person, as to say it's anonymous. That's to the a claim that whoever the researcher is, researcher is will, will, will not change the data collected or the data what is there is collected as it is and, and, and the position of the researcher does not alter the situation but now we give a personalized we can give a personalized account of the method of my process of research that what I found I went this as we can use it in first person so it is it, it and it, it can also be dialogical we can use dialogues so these are the new in, uh, innovations, redefinitions, redefining. You no, know, ethnography has redefined itself as a corollary to the emerging queries, interrogations, criticisms within every disciplines, uh, with every social sciences. And I would say social sciences because this whole notion of positivism, post-positivism, reflexivity has not only affected, impacted sociology or anthropology but all disciplines all social sciences humanities dis discipline and everyone has been impacted and even when we try to study The speaker has been disconnected, so we'll wait for her.
am I audible? Yes, ma'am. You are now. Okay, I'm just uh, using my uh, mobile uh, mobile sure. headset, mobile data. I hope that will serve the purpose for now. This is some problem, the connectivity issue in my department okay. at the moment. So sorry about no it. <sighs> okay, uh, what I was at um, uh, the subject position of the researcher. Just try to get Yes, the subject. The position of a researcher. And, and well, now when you're trying to. Uh, oh, then at the same time. When we we have to again remember certain point from certain points in the sense that when we access a field, even if I try. When I'm, it, it, it is it is it is in continuation of what I've been saying is that when we are Even in what lies out there is one dimension of it. I cannot bring in all the meanings. It is not possible. Well, I'll just switch off the video and focus upon the audio. Okay. Uh, is my voice breaking? Can you can you get, uh, hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? No, now it's it's audible, ma'am. If you switch off the video, I think that it might work. Yeah. I think so. Let me see if I can come back to yeah, this. Yeah, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's much clearer now. Let me okay. Let me see if I can come back to my desktop. That will make it. Sorry for taking your time. The phone also is not so very helping. Well, I don't have much to say because this is a little bit of uh, left for what I wanted to say. Now, uh, we also need to uh, think about uh, to understand this. At the same time, the appraisals also need to be also in the lines of uh, lines of uh, uh, four. I think there are four points which we can take up. Like when we are conducting research, we should also be very self-conscious about about the 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 political purpose that the research is actually leading to. Who's who? What kind of purpose it act, it might serve? What kind of purpose it serves? Whose purpose is it serve? A uh, uh, intentionally or unintentionally that we have to be very critical about, and then. Most often, we have to be. Uh, we have to see the ethical considerations. Ethical in the sense that are we exploiting the people? Because most often, qualitative research also also bears this this criticism of of criticism of not being completely ethical because completely ethical because most of the researches most often they are covert. It's not always overt, but covert. 
researchers all most often happen to conduct many researchers research without gaining the consent of the people uh, they are trying to research so this covertness is something which is which gives brings in opportunities and also is, is ethical uh, ethical it is it's quite unethical it says but then there are debates that should we go for covert uh, covert uh, 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 observation or not some would say we can some would say we should not so again that's a domain which is again open to the researcher to defend and to justify justify so then again epistemological epistemologically every discipline is undergoing a proliferation of ideas and methods and with it ethnography is again you know it expanding itself and as i've already said the ethnography at the moment has divide, had, had adopted so many methods so many methods of of understanding uh, reality is that uh, uh, you know reality it is is so much so that at, the, at present when we say that uh, can the question is can we actually differentiate between different disciplines so far as the adopting method of ethnography is concerned that becomes very critical because i would say the boundaries the borders are very very fuzzy at the moment even at times some would say that any kind of quality research someone would, would say that could be ethnographic and there are some uh, experts who would say no everything is not ethnographic and i would suggest that mo in most cases it depends upon the researcher to defend their positions why do researcher thinks that this is ethnographic well, how, how 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 they would want to defend it so most of it depends upon the researcher now now i i'd, I'd like to summarize i i would like to summarize and uh, conclude my presentation saying that you know these developments which i have talked about in a very nutshell you know it, we cannot uh, reduce it in a very temporally in a temporary linear, linear line but we can, we observe that there are multiple strengths in it and these strengths at times apparently are very contestations and these uh, many they show that the efforts are an ongoing process to comprehend what reality is all about and we also have a way of understanding you know and in this notion we also see how how reality could be understood as a go between between a uh, go between um, a structure and agency does the, does agency or you as a person me as a person have any take in 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 the emergence in the construction of the macro realities in the wider realities so these are again the positions the theoretical position of a researcher with which a researcher would carry the uh, carry research in fact it is a objective of study social real or x of it intensively can experience that and activity method accounting for its diversity generating debates on social ontology and epistemology and in the process expanding its contours so i would say, i would like to uh, just end by saying ethnography is at the same time a methodology a method and it's also a text and is very creative and a lot depends upon how the ethnographer the researcher views the entire process and entire and the person himself as well thank you very much i hope i could make sense and i was audible i'm so sorry for this uh, internet connectivity problem i'm not sure if you can hear me thank you ma'am uh that was a very intense and riveting session i'm sure we all have questions so ma'am begin with a very pertinent question what is ethnography and uh, etymologically what it means basically it is to write about culture and for that we need a theoretical understanding of what culture is then only we can come to what forms of research qualifies as ethnography yeah okay. i'm sorry uh, can you hear me oh sorry uh, i just yes, don't hear you i'm not okay i'll yeah. one second one right. second yeah. i'll just rejoin my i don't hear i don't hear you in the desktop i uh, can you hear me now 
All right. Uh, so basically, MAM focused on the trajectories of the development of ethnography, anchoring on the works of Radcliffe Brown, Malinowski, and Durkheim, particularly Malinowski with his emphasis on participant observation. So he elaborated on how one must grapple with cultural re uh, relativism while contextualizing the emergence of ethnography since its very early epistemology. Uh, while talking about participant observations, Sri drew our attention to how immersion is pivotal. Ethnography, as he said, is a multiplicity of methods, and the methods to be used lies with the discretion of the researcher. She also focused on the question of the researcher's access to a particular field as a participant observer. In terms of acceptance and how the researcher's very presence does not disturb the mundane everyday occurrences of the group concerned. Next, he talked about objectivity. Autoethnography, as he stressed, should not blur the position of a researcher as a participant observer. At the same time, she talked about how objectivity stands trial in the context of post-positivist epistemology. The researchers are also producers and consumers of meaning, and they have their own baggage, subjective positions, and belongings. The cats, as they stress, is that when the researcher moves across the field, it is an interaction of subjectivities. And because of this, the position of the researcher is critical, and one, one must be conscious of what one brings with themselves to the field, as the field has its own meanings and practices. Being aware of one's own subject position, she stress, is crucial while conducting research. But we may some circumvent this by acknowledging and being self-critical of one's position, positionalities and leaving it up to the reader to make sense of it by using their own positions. This, of course, is the reflexive turn in anthropology and in social sciences. The researcher is no longer anonymous, is highly personalized, conscious of their own agency, and must be critical about what purpose and ethical considerations do they serve. So in, in all, uh, Dr. Yasmin Hoikya Mem, Sabina Yasmin Hoikya Mem provided what is basically a fast sweep of the emergence of anthropology as a field and how the role of the researcher has evolved in terms of their own interaction with the field as the field constitutes itself, and what caveats we may take as researchers, regardless of our disciplines, as the boundaries already are becoming very fuzzy. So I hope this has provided our participants with some new avenues and tools of intros uh, introspecting their own works. So now we are open to questions and comments. If the participants have any questions, they may type them in the text channel or may raise their hands, unmute themselves, and ask their questions. So now we are open for questions. If anyone has any questions, they may type them in the chat box or alternatively, they may raise their hands and unmute them themselves and ask the question. Uh, yeah, so Munirul Hussein has raised his hand. Sir, if you could unmute yourself and ask a question. Hello. Yes, sir. You're audible. Hello? May I audible? Yeah. Yeah, you are. Please go ahead. Yes, yes, yes. 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 The Peter Sabine has been making a very, very good deliberation. I have one question. In chat box, you see how many funding agencies for ethnographic studies in the industry? Hello? Yes, sir. Ma'am, if you could. Respond to that. Can you please repeat the question because I couldn't get the question properly. Hello, ma'am. Ma yeah. Yes, how many funding agencies for ethnographic studies in India? Or ethnic people in Assam? <laughs> ah, India so okay, many ethnic is, groups. Uh, I must Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's yes, a very complex question. That, that's, a very, that's, a very, uh, that's a very complex question of the funding agencies. Okay. I think, uh, okay, okay. yeah, I'll not have much of a uh, take on it, but rather what I know that at the moment, we you know, the union is actually shrinking, shrinking itself from this okay. particular um, area, and the funding has actually shrunk as much more than it has been a decade back for the social sciences. Oh. If there are any agencies you can find, 
As we know, you just think it's no longer very, uh, very vibrant as it used to be a decade back. I see, sir, it's also become very selective. But the, these are agencies, the international uh, funding agencies also, who have uh, the criteria, meet the criteria, international agencies, funding agencies. Ma'am, is there any ASI, ASI funding agency? Funding agency? Anthropological funding agency? Any funding agency there? Where? Where? Yeah. I didn't get your point. Is there any... Uh, uh, I, uh, I, uh, 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 is there any uh, uh, for uh, for uh, for of India? Uh, that's fine. Go ahead. Yeah, I think you... I think they will be funding if they are. I don't know, but I'm not so sure because what I see is that you know the whole uh, thing of funding has become very you know very straight jacket at the moment. It's no longer as uh, broad as it used to be. Standard. I, I don't know. You may share the same experience, but it is what I feel at the moment. I think is it. I think I think uh, that's fine for now. Okay, thank you, ma'am. I'll talk with you about telephoning message. Okay, thank you. We can talk about it. Uh, we have another question on our tech channel. This is from uh, Komal Saraf. So she's asking, can you elaborate more on the reflexive turn in ethnography, ma'am? Uh, yes, this is in fact a very uh, broad domain. You know that it has emerged. Uh, with the whole idea of uh, the it, it, it starts with the positive a critic of positivism I would say and the whole uh, the position of positivism has been that as I've said that we can understand others as we can understand objects and the researcher is a subject the researcher can understand can comprehend and the object this research those who research they are being objects. The reality is given. It is um, it's there out there. We just have to go, grasp it, come back from the field. So that whole notion has now changed, and and there are, there are not many intellectual trends because of which this has occurred. And you can really find materials on it. But the point, the basic point here is that with the critic of positivism and different trends of critics, criticism has emerged. Now we've become very much sensitive to the idea that those who are who we are whom we are researching are also people who are subjects. Subjects in the sense that they make meaning. They have their own meanings of things. They they have their own meanings, they understand using those meanings, they comprehend meanings. And they create meanings. And meanings are always contextual. Meanings are not always fixed. Although they are broader structures of understanding, the interpretive uh, uh, paradigm would say that the meanings are very micro, meanings are pretty very micro, micro domain. But again, there are other theoretical paradigms who would say that there's a, there is a continuity between structure and agency. But here I want to point out that if we take that every person is an agency, every person is a subject, that in that sense, the researcher and those who are research are on at the same level. They are at par with each other and no different from though and not much different qualitatively from the people who I'm going to study, in the sense that they are also bearers of a culture, I'm also bearer of a culture. And therefore, when I am going to study my study these people, I will be doing it from the lens, from the cultural lens, from the academic lens, all the lens which I have been enculturated in, all the ideas that I have been socialized into, and I have been trained it, I've been using it 
to study another kind, another people, another person who is also equally oriented in their own context. And there will be an intersubjective exchange of ideas and through which the meanings are retrieved. So when we become aware that when we become aware that this is what actually happens, we no longer make claims that what I am researching is the ultimate. What I am researching is the given. What I am researching is everything that needs to be researched about the people I want to study. I now be sensitive, very conscious, very aware of the idea that what I am studying is actually, actually the meanings that emerge as the process of my ex exercise to understand. So when we two are talking, right now when we both of us are, uh, when I'm saying this thing, the text which I'm saying, what you're trying to comprehend is an intersubjective exchange and meanings are being created in this way. So similarly, in the field also, meanings are being created and I, I endeavor I make an effort to comprehend the meanings of the people I think I understand. And it's also an assumption of it. It's a very strong assumption, you know, that I understand. That I believe that I understand. Phenomenology would actually say that. I believe that I understand. It's a, And I would say it's just an assumption. And we go by this ontological security, a sense of ontological security, that there is this, uh, there is this valid truth out there and I'm understood. But that we, we become, we understand. But here it says that we have to be very critical that this is what is being created. And therefore, I have to be, uh, I, I have to understand my positionality just as the way I have to understand the positionality, the subjective positionality of, the, of, the, of those who I want to research. That is one dimension of reflexivity. And the other dimension is that we have to be self-critical of everything that we are doing in the field. As I said, what will my intervention because my presence in the field lead to, will it lead to what kind of changes it will lead to in the field? What kind of message I am carrying back to? What I'm writing, will it actually alter the experiences of the people I'm studying? Or will it in some way be of some kind of benefit, not merely to readers, but to some people who are more powerful, some people who are, who are actually, who might use it to their own benefit, so there are some kind of critical dimensions which we'll be taking care of, we'll be aware of. So critical ethnography is also part of reflexivity, as we said at the same time. So we are now actually, uh, we are becoming more aware. And when we become more aware, and when we write about, when we write about this in our, uh, about the data, we, we, we interpret and represent the data in a written form and a written text, we have to mention as clearly or elaborate as clearly as possible the my positions, who I am, what I am, what are my ideas, what are the, are the how I have navigated in the field, field while, in the, while conducting the field work, and how I have negotiated, what, why I adopt a particular method, why I could not adopt a particular method. And those kind of conditions, those kind of background have to clearly laid out for, the, for others to understand the context in which my data has been collected and the context in which the interpretations has been made. So mostly it is about, you know, rereading text. I hope it, uh, it makes some, you can get what you wanted to know. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, if we have any more questions. Yes, we don't have any. So thank you, ma'am, again. Thank you for your wonderful and engrossing address. It's been a delight to listen to you today. I'm sure all our participants will have new tools and methods at their disposal to interrogate their own subject positions and agency after today's session in terms of their work and the meanings they produce and consume and how these meanings may alter experiences for others uh, to those who are invested or involved in our works. So if we do not have any more questions, uh, I'd like to move on to the next agenda. Now I'd like to request Dr. Anupam Chanda to familiarize our participants with the rules and regulations of the workshop. 
Dr. Chanda is the librarian of Bahana College and also a convener for this workshop. Sir. Mm, thank you, Vikram. Am I audible? Yes, you are. OK. Uh, respected Dr. Santana Sritya, Principal Bahana College. Uh, respected Dr. Sridhya Sutiya, sir, Principal in Sutiya College. And respected Dr. Sabina Yasmin Sritya, ma'am, uh, Associate Professor, Department of Sociology, Guwahati University. Uh, and my esteemed colleague, Dr. Pankaj Bora, Vikram Bora, and uh, Rima Raba. Sangeeta Das and all other participants and my Bahana College colleagues. So I'm going to tell about the rules and regulations of the workshop. Uh, already we have shared with you the rules and regulation of the workshop. Uh, for the national level, one with online workshop on research methodology for ethnography study, which is organized by IPC Bahana College in collaboration with Sutia Jatiya Bhavasana Purpal. So here I'm telling you the rules and regulation. Uh, so first rule is the workshop is for paid or I can say registered members only. So please do not share the Google Meet link to anyone. Okay. Because this is only for the paid register. That means you, the participants, those who have registered and pay the registration fee so and the second rule is we have daily three session the first and second session of the workshop will be the live session using the google meet link and the third session will be the assignment session the timing of the first session is 10 30 to 12 and the second session is 1 30 to 3 the third session is 6 to 9 30. so for the first and second session you have to join at least 10 minutes ahead of the schedule time. That is for the first session, you need to join 10.20 a.m. every morning. And for the second session, 1.20 p.m. in the afternoon. Participants are requested to maintain at least 80% attendance in the workshop. Your attendance records will be collected using Google service. Your attendance is necessary for the validation of your certificate. So please be available in the workshop every day. If there is any net, net issues, you can uh, directly contact us. You can message us. Just we have net issue, um, uh, internet issues, so we can understand. Otherwise, you have to be present there. As EGC regulation, submission of feedback is mandatory. So we'll, we'll share the feedback form link in the, uh, after the, the second session. And you need to fill up this feedback form uh, before 4.30 4 p.m. every day. And in the feedback form, there is a provision to upload one screenshot. So please take at least one screenshot for every session so that you can upload the screenshot. <laughs> then we will share the assignments with you every day. And you need to submit the assignment through the Google Classroom. We have already shared the link of the Google Classroom as well as the code of the Google Classroom. So please join the Google Classroom. We will share all the assignments through Google Classroom only. And you need to submit in it in the Google Classroom. If you face any problem uh, for submitting or to join the Google Classroom, you can directly contact to me. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Anupam Janda. My mobile number is already there in the group 7002039631. So you can directly contact with me uh, if you face any problem uh, by, for using Google Classroom. Then here we have uh, already shared the Google Classroom rings as well as the uh, Google Meet link and the uh, WhatsApp group joining link. If, uh, if you do, didn't join the WhatsApp group, Please join the WhatsApp group. All the necessary information about the workshop will be shared in the WhatsApp group only. We have already sent an email also. Please check your e email uh, through which you have registered. If you do not uh, find the email in your inbox, please check the spam mail also. You will find the email in the spam mail. And please join the WhatsApp group so that you, uh, you will find the, all the uh, necessary information regarding the workshop in the WhatsApp group. 
thank you if you have any query then you can directly message uh, sms uh, whatsapp me in my number or you can call me thank you over to you now i'd like to request now I'd like dr rima rava dr rima rava uh, offered a vote of thanks dr rava thanks. is an assistant rava. professor with the department of economics, of economics. and also a convener and for this workshop Thank you, Vikram. Am I audible? Yes. Honorable Principal Dr. Sharana Saikya, ma'am. Esteemed keynote speaker Dr. Sabina Yasmin Saikya, ma'am. Distinguished participants and colleagues. It is an immense privilege for me to extend warm and sincere thanks on behalf of the organizing committee of the one week workshop on research methodology on ethnographic study. Firstly, representing the organizing committee, I'd like to express our gratitude to Dr. Shabina Yasmin Saikya Ma'am for accepting our invitation and gracing us with her presence today. Your insightful session uh, will undoubtedly assist us all in conducting research activities on ethnography. I'd also like to extend our appreciation to our honorable principal Ma'am for her welcome address and continuous support and guidance throughout. Dr. Pankaj Bora, IQC coordinator for conceptualizing the workshop. Uh, thank you, ma'am. We shall now break for lunch and reconvene in for the afternoon session, which is to start at 1.30. Uh, please join the Google Meet link at least 15 minutes prior to the beginning of the session. So thank you all. And again, our gratitude to Dr. Uh, Sabina Yasmin Hoika, ma'am, for allowing, allowing us to begin this workshop on a very productive note. Thank you. And we'll see you that I'm And with uh, this, the uh, first session has been formally closed. One thirty that I'm going to go. Tame the Barota Hehon, Barota Ligate. Huh?